Welcome to the Buffalo News Play Action Podcast and our NFL 2024 Draft Preview. And the starting point for this discussion is so easy uh, in the wake of the Bills uh, trade, blockbuster trade of Stefan Diggs creating a gaping hole at the wide receiver position. Catherine, uh, here we go. Let's talk receivers. Yeah, when we had scheduled this podcast, we didn't know that Diggs was going to be traded the day before. Um, so it kind of changes the tenor of what we're talking about. But yeah, the Bills made a huge move this week, um, sending Stephon Diggs to the Houston Texans. It's going to change what this team looks like in so many ways. Um, what were kind of your initial reactions to the trademark? I was surprised because I thought that uh, obviously we had written all off uh, for months the optimal time to unload digs was after the 2024 season. So uh, nothing says don't let the door hit you on the way out like eating $31 million of cap space. Uh, so uh, they think uh, obviously it's addition by subtraction, um, I thought Brandon Bean was uh, very, I give him credit for being uh, respectful uh, yesterday in his news conference of a guy who's caught 535 passes for him over four years. Yeah, I think when you look at so many different ways that Stefan Diggs impacted this team, it's so interesting of what he was doing just from a production standpoint, what he was doing you know, within the team too. Um, it was interesting. Brandon Bean was saying how you weigh everything when you're deciding whether or not you move on from a player. That was when I asked him about some of the off the field stuff and just how there seemed to be chaos every off season, even during the season too. We just kind of went through the same cycle of is Stefan Diggs happy? Yes or no? Um, you know, the team always defended his passion and everything like that. And Brandon Bean did again yesterday saying, you know, he always wants him to have that competitive nature, but ultimately, um, you know, they kind of looked at everything when they were deciding, does this move make sense? And they decided it did. Yeah, and I got. I apologize for getting a little carried away there. Uh, it's, uh, well, I think, 435 passes over four seasons. But anyway, <laughs> the point is the same. Uh, you know, clearly, uh, yeah, obviously, as you wrote in uh, today's Buffalo News, uh, which I encourage people uh, to look for online, uh, uh, you know, his uh, production saw a stark decline over the last 13 games uh, uh, versus the first six. Uh, 12 catches a game the first six, five catches a game the last 13. Uh, Non-factor against Kansas City. You know, I think we can definitely conclude they feel uh, Josh Allen and Joe Brady, uh, I think we expect will be uh, somewhat relieved by not having the pressure of forcing the ball to digs. Um, and there's a lot of elements to this. Uh, Diggs certainly could have been helped more if the Bills had a better number two uh, than Gabe Davis, who is a middle of the pack number two, in my view. Uh, Diggs would have been helped if the Bills could have stretched the field better. Uh, but of course, he's part of that too. Right. Uh, and the reality is, they had opportunity. The teams, uh, you know, squad. They, they, the Bills couldn't get defenses to spread out enough because they couldn't stretch the field enough. And Diggs didn't catch the ball deep. We've documented that. He's the deep completions were lacking, and everybody's going to remember the deep ball against Kansas City in the second half could have won the game or change the game anyway, might have, who knows. Yeah. Would have helped. Sure would have yes. helped. Would have changed uh, for And sure. likewise, Josh isn't, uh, 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 is responsible for this too, because there were a bunch of, pa at least three that I can think of where Diggs is open deep and Josh misses them. The London game was one against Jacksonville. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's, again, just kind of, Interesting to forecast what this team's going to look like next year. Brandon Bean did note how Diggs was a big part of this team being a contender for the last stretch. Oh, no doubt. Um, a big part of the turnaround, but I think now they're moving forward without him, so. 
Yeah, I mean, and there's no, like, hey, let's, uh, it's easy to say goodbye to Stefan, or uh, to, to now to say goodbye, but he, he has been a great player for this team. It's a hun, uh, 107 catches last year. They said goodbye to Davis. They said goodbye to Sherfield. That's 163 catches. They're losing. Josh Allen completed 385. Josh Allen is going to rank in the top 10 in completions. Somebody is going to catch the ball. <laughs> if I'm Khalil Shakir, or Curtis Samuel, woohoo! Uh, because somebody's got to catch the ball, right? Uh, the ball's going somewhere. Um, now, the draft, the rookie they bring in, uh, is going to catch, they hope, a bunch of those passes. So this move will work out for the Bills if they land a productive, good receiver. That's not easy to do uh, in the draft. Uh, now, it is a great deep draft for receivers. They did successfully land an outstanding receiver who was way more productive as a rookie last year than almost than most anybody in Dalton Kincaid. 73 catches. That's, that's a home run for a rookie. If they could get that, psh, so now we got to talk about where they got to go at dra in the draft. A final thought here on saying goodbye to Diggs. This is a big overhaul of the roster. Diggs, Trey White, Poyer, Hyde, Floyd, Morse, Gabe Davis, all out the door. Uh, but this is, uh, it strikes me as a very Belichickian course that they're taking. They, Be Belichick being the master at saying goodbye to guys a year too early rather than a year too late. And all of those guys, aside from Gabe Davis, uh, have their best football, their very best football is behind them. So uh, now the key is finding good people to fill the holes. So let's look to the draft a bit. I feel even before the Stiggs move, we were debating whether or not do they need to go receiver in the first round. And now, I mean, what do you think? Yeah, I <laughs> was uh, going to walk into this podcast saying you could make a great case to go Chap Robinson, perhaps at 28, uh, and go receiver in the second round. There will be good receivers available in the second round at number 60. Maybe guys like Ricky Pearsall, Florida, Tez Walker, North Carolina, Jalen Polk, uh, Washington, Javon Baker, uh, who uh, is I like from Central Florida, maybe second or third. Uh, but I don't see how you don't go receiver now uh, at, at 28. I, I just uh, Or try to move up a little to get a receiver. Uh, so uh, who are we talking about? There's the top three that are out of their reach. Uh, Brian Thomas Jr., LSU. Most mock drafts have him going in the late teens, early 20s. Lad McConkey, Georgia. Most mock drafts have him going late first, or maybe more of them have him going early second. Uh, A.D. Mitchell, uh, Texas. Big, long, tall, speed guy uh, like him. So those are the th those are three options that I like. Xavier Leggett, South Carolina, big receiver. Um, maybe 28 is a, a little. Maybe you could trade back a little. But all those guys have speed. A.D. Mitchell, 434. Brian Thomas, 433. Lad McConkey, 439. Yeah, I think we were talking about before we sat down of just kind of Brandon Bean usually does a good job of not backing himself into a position that he needs to go for. But it seems this year could be a little different. Uh, that's where. a great point. That's a great. And, and this is uh, we've never had a draft where he is in this situation. Uh, I, I agree with that. So, I mean, and now you're you're looking at, well, with Diggs on the team, they, you'd like a tall, you need a tall X to be the perfect complement. That's still the case. But I wonder if this doesn't open the door a little more to Lad McConkey. He's 5'11", 186. He's not your true big X. He did his best work in the slot for Georgia. 
precise route runner, uh, route, route runner quick separation gets open. I mean, I love guys who get open. His seat, his floor is so high. Um, you know, and I, he, you know, he, I hate to give uh, over eager comps, but has some, uh, Cooper Cup vibes. He can okay. play outside and inside. He could fill the Diggs role. Uh, um, you know, I mean, A.D. Mitchell, Brian Thomas, Lad McConkey. I'd be happy with all three of them. Brian Thomas is number one. Uh, can they? Tra- would they? They probably have to trade up a little to get Brian Thomas of LSU. Uh, so that's an interesting. You know, do they want to give up? that pick that they got from Houston 2025 second round to try to move up a little that's a question they've got some options now Brandon Bean did joke at owners meetings how he loves to trade up Um, so I don't think he's showing his hand exactly there more just kind of quipping about what he's done the last few years but can't rule it out yeah I I don't get over eager on how much uh, the bills might get for that 2025 second rounder it is minnesota's pick minnesota's going to be real building probably with a rookie quarterback you know they added mm-hmm. the extra picks yada yada uh so you'd like to you're i mean you got to think minnesota's picking earlier in the second round than houston minnesota let's say it's a t- it's 10th overall pick 42nd pick that's a pretty good pick but if you're trading next year's pick and you're looking at draft charts it's half the value like NFL GMs are saying, okay, well, that's worth X number of points, but it's really worth half that value for this year's draft because we got to wait a year. So basically, uh, I think they could package that pick and maybe move up to 19, 18, 17. I think the highest they could get is 16. Seattle doesn't need a wide receiver. So the whole question is, with uh, wide receiver, uh, like making a trade, you got to find somebody willing to go back to 28. So, you know, eh, it's hard to get to talk somebody into moving from 13 down to 28. For sure. Um, uh, so, and then another factor, Kansas City needs a wide receiver at 32. Man, you'd like to, you don't want Kansas City jumping yet. No. <laughs> you want the receiver, you don't want Kansas City taking the receiver you want. Uh, now, the Bills probably have a little more capital than Kansas City, so that's good. Um, again, my pecking order is Thomas, Adani Mitchell, and uh, McConkie are even. I, I, McConkie, I think, moves up a little with the loss of Diggs. Um, Tough call. Uh, I would encourage Bills fans to go watch, go do YouTube highlights of those three guys. Okay, we have talked wide receivers uh, slightly to death, although we could go on for uh, more minutes about that. But let's uh, pivot to the other needs beyond wide receiver. Yeah, the Bills have quite a few needs this year. Um, When I'm looking at them, I mean, rule out quarterback. I think they're set there. Um, (laughs) Congratulations to them. That's huge. But outside of that, I mean, there's so many different positions that they still need to fill. I think to me, um, defensive tackle, defensive end, and safety all really stand out. You look at how they've rehauled the defense basically or in the middle of retooling it. Um, There's a lot of work to do there. Yeah, they have starters there. But uh, obviously, Von Miller, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> a convenient time to part ways with Von Miller would be after the 2024 season. It's hard to get. That's one where defensive end, uh, if you're not uh, taking him, the ideal place to take him is in the first, late in the first round where they got Greg Rousseau. If you're not taking him at 60 in the second round, then you're just taking a flyer on a guy. Uh, Daryl Johnson, if you recall, the long-armed guy who was a flyer and he never panned out. But you're just taking flyers on guys. So, uh, you know, uh, Chop Robinson would be the guy at 28. But, again, we think they got to go. they got to go receiver. So what about 60? Chris Braswell, Alabama, 6'3", 251. Uh, You know, Bills, you know, Bills like SEC guys. The, The Bills like traits. 
Uh, he would be a guy they would be really attractive at 60. Marshawn Neeland, Western Michigan, big, tall, long. Bills like long defensive ends. Got to be able to stop the run. One trick ponies who are just situational, 241 pound speed guys. They're not, I don't see them taking that at number 60. So that is a defense, a couple defensive ends. Safety. You know, they, they're, they're good at, st they're set at starter. So the need there isn't huge unless they love the guy at 60. The guy who really uh, uh, would be, I like at 60, is Utah's Cole Bishop. You know, it's, uh, it, it's funny, there are more, there aren't as many center field Micah Hyde safeties uh, in this draft as there are in the box safeties, uh, in my view. Uh, you know, so like if we're looking at day three, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, a needle in a haystack. But uh, Trey Taylor, Air Force, cousin of Ed Reed, uh, is fifth, sixth round maybe, fifth, sixth, seventh round, who I think could be uh, center field safety. Defensive tackle, uh, you know, I think guys, the guy I, I love, Braden Fisk of Kyle, of, 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 Florida State. He's a rolling ball of butcher knives in the Kyle Williams mold, but eh, he's going to be gone before 60. So I just mentioned him because I like him. But uh, at 60, Mason Smith of LSU. Again, defensive lineman, Bills like traits. They're not draft. They don't want an overachieving, wonderful guy uh, who uh, they want a guy with big physical size, speed, strength. Mason Smith, 6'5. Uh, he would be a good choice at defensive tackle if he's there at 60. Yeah, I think it's, you look at, we talked before about how Brandon Bean usually does a good job of not putting himself into a corner of when it comes to picks, but now it's almost like there's so many different places to look. Um, day three, especially, it feels like they can go so many different directions of, I don't know, where do you rank the needs then? Yeah, yeah no, I mean, I think that's a good point from the standpoint, you're, you're speaking to the fact they can draft, you always talk, well, best player available. I, they really can. Yeah day two and day three go best player available. Um, and uh, so I, other positions, you, you brought, I agree with you on those three uh, areas. Other positions, I, they could easily draft. They need a big running back um, to, because they got enough speed at running back. They need mm -hmm. a big running back to replace Latavius Murray. Um, there are uh, a number of good big running backs uh, Available, I think they can fill that role. Braylon Allen of Wisconsin would be ideal. Does he last till the end of the fourth? I don't know. Maybe not, but there's others they could take there. They could. They need another player at interior offensive line, a guard center. Uh, again, uh, that's one where they might not go totally on traits. Uh, you know, Zach Zinter of Michigan, uh, again, day three guys. K.T. Levison of Kansas State, sixth round. I like him a lot. He's got traits. Hunter Norzad of Penn State, a center. Uh, cornerback, uh, they could go cornerback uh, on day three. A guy, I, again, if you're looking, this is one. They have Bills like you, you, they're not drafting a tackle, uh, a cornerback who can't tackle, yeah. who won't stick his nut. They, absolutely not. They like cornerbacks with long arms. Look for guys 31 inches and a more. Trey White, 32 and an eighth. Dane Jackson, 30, 30 and three eighths. Elam, 30 and seven eighths, basically 31. Levi Wallace, 32 and three quarters. Look for cornerbacks with longer arms. MJ Devonshire of Pitt. I talked to him at the combine. 32 and 7 eighth arms. He's like Dane Jackson, only a little bigger. Love him uh, if they could get him on day three. Jarvis Lu Brown, uh, Brownlee of Louisville loves to tackle 31 and a quarter inch arms. These are just day three guys that who knows if they're going to be on the board when they pick. But, uh, you know, uh, at offensive tackle, I would expect them to bring in another offensive tackle. They need uh, more competition uh, at, tack at, at swing tackle. So, yeah, uh, a whole slew. Yeah, it's, again, outside of quarterback, there's so much they can do. Yeah. Um, it's good to have draft crushes already. Yeah. <laughs> um, right now, we're in the middle of doing series of each position on buffalonews.com where you can check out position by position, you know, 
names to know, who might be in the mix, some sleeper picks, but we'll have so much coverage online leading up to the draft. Make sure you're reading buffalonews.com for everything, and we'll be back to podcasts again after the draft too, so make sure you're subscribing wherever you get your podcasts.